Attorney General Letitia James of New York faces some heavy criticism and scrutiny for her out of control and possibly even illegal spending habits. Kind of ironic. Hunter Biden faces a lawsuit of over a million dollars for doing nothing. And Joe Biden toys with treasonous behavior as revealed by a recent FOIA lawsuit. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee. This is your March 6th edition of The Breakdown. If you haven't already, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel below and click the notification bell. And be sure to leave a like so that YouTube is more likely to show this video to the Democrats. They need it. New York Attorney General Letitia James seems bent on bankrupting and destroying Donald Trump by turning every business dispute or minor, minor infraction into some felony punishable by a $100 million fine or more. In case you're just a little behind on the details, a frivolous lawsuit brought on by James resulted in a ruling against President Trump to the tune of nearly half a billion dollars in damages for an alleged crime that wasn't even prosecuted as a crime, but a civil action. It had no victim, and all the parties involved in the supposed infraction were better off for the deal. So the question I've been waiting for is, how well would she hold up to being held to the same strict scrutiny that she holds others to? Well, according to one independent journalist with the X-handle Village Crazy Lady, Letitia James wouldn't hold up very well. According to Village Crazy Lady, who also goes by the name Mel, when she got asked to look into Letitia James' financials last week, she wasn't expecting to find much. Of course, no one should be surprised that some dirt can be found on someone who doesn't have a shred of integrity. Mel writes that Letitia has had a scandal-free time in public service for well over a decade. Turns out, that was just because no one had seen her dirty tricks quite yet. Not only do there appear to be a huge number of out-of-state donors who may be ghost donors, meaning elderly people with no money who miraculously gave thousands of dollars to hundreds of Democrats, at least according to the names and addresses on the records, but her spending is also eye-popping. Mel found that in 2023 alone, New York Attorney General Letitia James spent a whopping $28,500 on hotels. Over 15,000 of that was spent on luxury hotels in Puerto Rico. And over the last five years, she spent more than $84,000 on airfare, including private jets, in order to fly herself all over the country. There seems to be a number of very large campaign expenses with no details or verification. Things like a $7,000 tab spent at a New York nightclub vaguely billed as an office expense, mm -hmm. and $4,335 at Nathan's Lux Lifestyle on Martha's Vineyard. As the reporter notes, this is pretty galling, considering that she's trying to destroy Donald Trump for not crossing every T and dotting every I on a loan contract. Rule number four of leftist guru Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals is make the enemy live up to its own book of rules. I think it's time to see how well Ms. James can stand up to the same standards that she applies to others. On the subject of alleged dirty crooks, you might also recall that Hunter Biden was paid a million dollars as a legal retainer by Patrick Ho of the Chinese energy firm CEFC. And that the question from investigators has always been, now what did Ho receive from Hunter Biden in exchange for all that money? A million bucks. The answer, at least according to Ho, nothing, nothing. And now he's taking advantage of this high-profile Biden finance case by threatening to sue Hunter Biden if his money isn't refunded within seven days. The Hong Kong law firm currently representing him wrote a letter to this effect this week to Hunter's attorney, Abby Lowell. We're wondering if he could have expedited repayment by just sending the letter directly to Kevin Morris, you know, otherwise known as Sugar Brother or Mr. Moneybags. As the New York Post reports, according to Ho, Hunter, who's 54 years old, pocketed the $1 million, but he did no legal work for him, other than call another attorney, Edward Kim, and turn up half an hour late for a meeting with Ho and Kim at the Manha Manhattan Correctional Center the morning after Ho's arrest. Ho was arrested in New York as he was getting off a plane from Hong Kong, arrested on a charge of bribing the presidents of Chad and Uganda. Joe must have been jealous of the attention they were getting. This happened just a couple of weeks after he had retained Hunter. Ho later complained that Hunter didn't even come to visit him in jail. I mean, gosh, for a million bucks, you'd think he'd at least shown up with a cake or something. Well, he ended up being sentenced to three years in prison, was deported to Hong Kong. 
Of course, it could be said that this is what Ho should have expected when he hired a crackhead as his attorney. Finally, continuing on our theme of Democrat cook, crooks, according to files acquired by national security expert Todd Benzman, Joe Biden isn't just flying illegal immigrants around the United States. He's flying them into the U.S. as well. Daily Mail reports that Joe Biden's administration has admitted transporting migrants on secret flights into the U.S. and lawyers for its immigration agencies claim revealing the locations could create national security vulnerabilities. Customs and Border Protection has refused to disclose information about a program last year secretly arranging flights for thousands, thousands of undocumented immigrants from foreign airports directly to U.S. cities. Use of a cell phone app has allowed for the near undetected arrival by air of 320,000 illegal aliens with no legal rights to enter the United States. Included in details of a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit first reported by Tom Bensman, the Center for Immigration Studies found that Biden's CBP had approved the latest secretive flights that transported hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants from foreign countries into at least 43 different American airports, all between January and December of 2023. So while Joe Biden and his administration have been making ridiculous excuses about why they can't stop the flow of illegal immigration at the border, they're spending a lot of your your taxpayer money to fly airplanes to South America, pick up hundreds of thousands of people making unverified claims of a need for asylum, and they're shipping them back here to drop them off who knows where with virtually no intention or hope of making them actually citizens. I guess true to their history, the Democrat elite need their cheap labor. It's a delight. And it's really fun having them. What I realized is there's so much prejudice against refugees, mostly because people don't know them. Lisa says she feels like she has her own personal chef, as Will Donde loves cooking. And to add insult to the injury, the government refuses to reveal where they're bringing all these people. I don't know about you, but... I kind of feel like I have a right to know if Joe Biden has decided to drop thousands of people into my community. The next time you need to show someone how little Joe Biden cares about the American people, point to this story. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the like button if you enjoyed the video. Be sure to tune into the live stream this Friday, where we'll cover more of the news this week, and I'll answer any questions you've got. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. It's totally free. That'll do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.